everybody welcome to my class developmental biology class and i would like to share my slide with you this developmental biology is designated for graduate students in biology department for master class and it has a credit 2.0 and for the first i would like to show that the topics that we will focus on learning about it before the mid semester, we will learn in the first meeting the concepts in developmental biology as the introduction lectures conducted by me. And for the second meeting is about the methods in developmental biology study. Then the third topic is about the development in invertebrates, about the early development and advanced developmental stage. But for the next meeting, four and four, Fit meetings, we will focus on the two different topics. The first is about the early development in vertebrates, and for the next is the advanced development stage in vertebrates itself. And for the latest topic of our class before the mid semester is about the metamorphosis, regenerations, and aging. Then on the Weight of sapiens, we will have mid axioms. And after that, pretty, um, I mean, in further, you will continue to study with other teachers in botany, focusing on flower development, plant embryogenesis, seed and fruits development, root, shoot, leaf, and vessels development, and eventually you will have the final exams at the end. In this class, in my class, the first meeting is will be my turn to explain the concept in diplomatic biology and also the basic principles of this line, I mean, acknowledgement. And for the kind of topics, a kind of, uh, you know, subjects that you also have to understand, because I believe that you have learned it during your undergraduate study, is about the uh, fertilization, gametogen, gametogenesis and fertilizations. Therefore, I suggest you to learn by yourself about the gametogenesis and fertilizations in order to understand the sophisticated, sophisticated about our topics in further, because in this developmental biology, we'll focus on the stage after fertilizations. It is meant that uh, since that, you know, like divisions, cellular divisions of embryo and further like you know, morphogenesis organizations and then the events happens after the, the developmental stage. And as the reference, I recommend you to you know, understand about the, the contents of the contents of developmental biology books written by Gilbert and Barassi, particularly the, the very in current editions. This is the 11th edition published in 2016. You may download it. You could download it uh, through the internet or other theory with you. And other reference that you may also read, for example, Albert, Brie and Lavis, and the friends. It is about molecular biology of the cells and consents also about the patterns, foundations of embryologies, and the statements, it's a very, the old one, the molecular genetics of plant development, if you want to focus on the development of the plants. But for me, it is quite enough for you to use this developmental biology written by T. Bird and Barassi. I will start with this story. So if we see in this picture that this is a frog starting their mating rituals while in these rituals eventually the female will release the eggs in a cluster and then these eggs will be fertilized with the sperm ejected by this male and immediately upon fertilizations these eggs will undergo the divisions the rise of zygote from the cellular or in, in differentiated single cells into the multicellular and eventually this definitive individuals 
like tadpoles. And from the tadpoles, these organisms, this this organism will also develop into the very distinctive characteristic of amphibian. Just try to remember this again that during the undergraduate study, you have learned about this uh, life cycles of that, I mean, the frogs or amphibians as the representatives of life cycles of organisms in gender worlds. So starting from gametogenesis, while the individuals, the female will produce a site and, and female will produce the sperm, and they will undergo the fertilizations when the sperm will meet with the other site. And upon fertilizations, it will form the zygotes, while the zygote will undergo the cleavage, they will, div, div, uh, will undergo the mitosis and divisions in multiple degrees of, of divisions multiple times to form the blastula. And then they will enter the gastrulation stage while they will form the three definitive germinal layers called ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. And these three layers of germinals, uh, I mean, formations, will be a very critical part of the formations of the organs after what? As you see here in organogenesis, these organisms will be undergoing based on these uh, formations and interactions and also differentiation of these three diff distinctive layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So during this organic genesis, there will be the formations of the organs, many organs, the entire organs, starting from the very basic formations and then will be continued to be the definitive and very distinctive formations of such and specific organs. And as you see here, for example, after hatching, then the, the, the individual will enter the larval stage and then the stage of maturity, well, while the female and male will be sexual immatures, then they are ready to produce a sperm or a side for the females. And then the life cycle will continue to be again and again. Here we see that uh, on gastrula, law, uh, it will produce it, uh, the, the very distinctive layers, the ectoderms, located in all the layers, mesoderms, in the middle layers and endoderms in very inner part of the embryos. And then there, there is also the germ cells. So th these cells are uh, very definitive. They have very distinctive fate to be the germs, to be the male or female cells. I mean, these reproductive cells, call it sperm and eggs. She here that in, in ectoderms, like it now to layers of that uh, individuals, I mean, in the zygotes, I mean, in, in, in the embryos, the ectoderms will form like epidermal cell skins and the central nervous systems, like the formations of the neurons, or uh, to be the neural cells that will be then transformed to be the melanocytes for pigment cells uh, for our skins and also for our eyes, for examples. And for the mesoderms in the middle layers, there will be several parts, the dorsal mesoderm will, will form the notochord, the parcel will form the bone of tissue, and intermediate mesoderms will then undergo to be tubal shells of the kidney, for example, and the lateral will be the red blood cells, while the head mesoderms will form the fascia muscles. And for the endoderm, internal located internal layers of the, 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 the oh, embryo, it will be Digestive tube, for example, the elementary canals, like stomach or intestines or even our colons, and respiratory tube, for example, it's like from the um, trachea and bronchioles, bronchus, and also the lung itself, and also parings that will also form the thyroid cells. Here, we want to show that. The, in developmental biology, in the developmental process, there are the sophisticated, the very complicated, I mean, the complex process that will mediate, that will make it possible of the single cells 
the undifferentiated single cells to be a determinative and functional organs as individuals in the, the, the living things. Here I will explain to you about a principal process in development. So for the development developmental process, there are four uh, I mean principal things that you have to understand that oh, the development should involve this four mechanisms. What is the first? It's cellular metabolism that the single zygote will be activated metabolism uh, based on its metabolisms and the enzyme will be activated, then this zygote will undergo the deficiency. So the deficient, the cell deficiency, call it mitosis, for example, it needs the energy, enzymes, and any kind of the substance needed for the formations of the part of the cells, because they will divide into different cells from the single cells. And therefore, it should be started by the activations of the metabolism of such as cells. And after the cell deficiency, the cells also should undergo the movements, the particular movement with a very particular directions into different part of such zygotes or embryo. And then beside the movement, the cells also will undergo the cellular differentiations that every single layers of such a cells or such a germinal tissue will then in up with the different types of organs. So it's called it the differentiations from the very unified uniforms, I mean unified of cellular form to be the very definitive cellular functions and forms and it, the formations of such tissues and organs of the body. See here, the process represents the formations, I mean the metabolisms of the zygote. So right upon fertilization, the sound here, the sperm enters the layers of the ovarian, the, the oocyte, I right? said that it's eggs of the mammalian eggs. So this is an uplucida and this is perivitelin membranes and then uh, I mean perivitelins and it's perivitelin membranes. So as you see here that uh, when the sperm enters these layers during the fertilization, then there is protein released by the sperm, call it PLC. This is possible lipase C, this kind of uh, enzymes. So PLC is needed in the cytoplasms of this oocyte. For what? Because PLC will bind to phosphoinositol to phosphate. So once this PLC binds to phosphoinositol to phosphate, located, I mean, bind in the vesicles of, the vesicles of, of this oocyte, then it will release the calcium itself as well as transformed to be inositol 3 phosphate. So there is phosphorylations, the aiding of phosphate here from two, so phosphate inositol D phosphate to be inositol 3 phosphate. And also it will release the acyl glycerols. So the, the, the release of inositol 3 phosphate is also as calcium, it will trigger the opening in acetyl 3 phosphate will often will will triggers the opening of the calcium channels in the endoplasmic reticulums of this oocyte. What is important of this process because it is about the calcium ions. The, end, the endoplasmic reticulum is filled with the high concentrations of the calcium ions. So once this channels, the calcium channels is open because uh, as triggered by inositol 3 phosphates, then the calcium will be released into the cytoplasm from the endoplasmic reticulum. It will go to outside and then it will increase the concentrations of calcium in the cytoplasms of the outside. And now it's become zygote actually because it has been fertilized by the sperm. So once the calcium increase or I mean released by the endoplasmic reticulums and 
once this concentration is increased in the cytoplasms of the zygotes, it will trigger the many kind of reactions, metabolic reactions. What is the importance of the increase of the calcium ions in the, cyto in, in the cytoplasms? First, the calcium will drive the cortical granules exocytosis. This is cortical granules that actually also uh, have been occurred in the cytoplasm, but when the concentration of the calcium increase, the cortical granule will be mobilized into outside and it will be undergo, I mean, it will undergo the exocytosis and it will release its substance to form the uh, layers that will block the intrusions of other sperms, that so-called blocking of polyspermy. And then the calcium is also needed to the resumption of the cell cycles because we know that during the before the fertilizations, the uh, deficiency of such oocyte is, is not completed yet, and therefore, by the increase of the calcium, it will finish the cell cycles. And here it is, as you see here, that actually by increase of the calcium concentrations, it will also. Uh, triggers the formations of chronoclase and and it will so here the calcium oscillation terminate with uh, pronuclear formations but the calcium can recruit maternal mRNA for translations so this mean the mRNA the genomes of this oocyte will be you know rise it will be triggered to to synthesis of proteins and uh, to be functional proteins like two synthesis enzymes and also the structurals and other functional proteins and therefore this uh, oocytes and now it's begins and becomes a zygote now it's metabolically active that is important uh, uh, the first stage of the metabolisms occurs during the, uh, the embryonic stage it's a very early stage and then the productions of ATP and also the use of the energy source like glucose, protein, and even fatty acid for the formations of the energy and structures of the cells is needed for, you know, kind of that activations of the zygotes to be undergo the deficient for the next stage. So let's keep the about the cell deficiency and cell movement because in the previous lectures we have learned about that cell deficiency and in, in zygotes and also cell movements in the previous lectures we have talked about how the cells could move from one place to other place by using the cellular signaling also interaction between the cells and then i will jump directly into the four stages it's about cellular differentiations talking about cellular differentiations it is about that the very definitive cells will undergo, will be the very definitive form. So there is specifying identity, identity of the cells. So related with the cell differentiation, there is called a commitment. Cells with a, with a very oh, early type of it, with very uniform arrangement of it and then it will uh, will be specifications or determinations it's so called the commitment of the cells so it is the specifications and describe as these pictures this is the zygotes i mean the embryos contained several different cells with a different specifications the red colors and the yellow colors and the white colors. When we then cultures or maintain, maintain this, we separate it and then we, we collect only single cell or only cluster of this, the, the specific the cells here, like for example, the red cell, then we culture it here. Then this red cell will be specified to be marshals only in 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 vitro cultures while the yellow cells will be specified to be the new one so it is called it the specifications while the particular clusters of the cells 
composed of the embryo will be the particular part of cells, differentiated cells, like for the muscle cells or for neuron cells. What is the difference between specification and determinations? So for the determinations, shown here that when bunch of the cells in the cluster form, so there is interaction between the red cells and the yellow cells, that's the, 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 I mean, this is the, the matter cell for the muscles and this mother cell for the neurons, and they, they are collected together, they, collect, they are collected together and then the cultures in, in mediums, in patriotis, for example. And the specific in, speci specifications of this muscle cells is labile. Why? Because uh, shown here that when these rat cells cultures with the neurons, neurons, I mean the mothers of the neuron cells surrounding it, it will then transform, differentiate to be specific, specified muscle cells changed to the neurons. So this that actually has the fate to be a kind of the muscles, but then because the interactions, the fact is affecting the interaction with the, the yellow cells, the mothers for the neuron cells, then it will be changed. The fat is changed to be from the muscles to be the neuron cells. So it's kind of determinations because it it is affected by the situations in outside. I mean, this is specifications. It's affected by by the the situations outside. I mean, it's surrounding it. Here, when uh, the specification is reversible, even the the muscle cells, the mother of muscle cells, is cultured with the same uh, the, the 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 other type of the cells that will may affect the circumstances for the cells then it's still only will be definitely to be the muscle cell itself. So it will specify muscle cell is determined become muscle despite surrounding environment. So for the specification, for the specifications, it could be affected by the environmental the circumstances. So the fact may change to be others like this. It's different on the circumstances when the this muscle cells cultures only the, the single cells without any interaction with other cells. It will be the muscle cells itself, and the, as well as in the neurons will be the neurons itself. But when we make a conditions well, that these muscle cells will be interacted with the neurons, with the stem cell for the neurons, then it will be, the, the fate will be changed. So the specification there is the tendency to be changed depend on the circumstances of the cells itself. But for the germination, it fits, the fact it's fits. When it is, once it is uh, determined to be the muscle cells, the world over the circumstances outside or surrounding such cells, it will be that effects from the early stage. So the muscle cells still will be the muscle cells, even the situations, the circumstances, the surrounding of change of transforms. Related with the specifications, there are actually three types of specifications. The first is autonomous specifications. Shown by these illustrations, the normal deployment of patella, it's kind of that impetive breed. This embryo consists of two types of the cells. There's different colors, like reddish colored and the gray cells colors. And it is made that it has a specifications. In the next stage, this red colors, I mean, yeah, the red cells will divide and also the the grades also will divide into different solid cells, undergo the divisions, and then they will form such a formations like this. 
shown here that actually the gray colors and the red colors cells have different specifications. Well, the, the, when you isolate this truck, it's called a trochoblast. So this trochoblast isolated and then it will undergo to be the ciliated cells. To call it autonomous specifications, even they oh, stay in, 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 in the formations by itself, but each different cells will have the, its uh, cytoplasmic determinants that will um, direct it to be the specific types of such as cells. So when we separate it, between uh, to be the single cells and then we culture it or we we make it we grow it in the in the, in the medium then the gray cells will form the non ciliated cells while the red cells will form the ciliated cells so it is meant there is a specific factors dominant factors contains in the cytoplasm of each different cells that will uh, be as a directors for the specifications of such cells. So it is autonomous. They have, they already have their own specifications caused by the factors, this kind of genetic factors inside of such every single cells of the embryo. It is also showed that the, the specifications of the cells, this is the embryo's yellow crescents here located in the uh, vegetal folds and then when the cells uh, reddish and the yellows in the animal folds and the reddish and the fungal folds, this is uh, the yellow crescents here. Then in a further stage of the animal's development, it will be, uh, it will have its specifications and it will uh, be the part of a particular um, organs or particular regions of such an uh, embryo itself or individuals itself. And it is also show uh, that every single part, uh, every single cells here, every single uh, part, uh, yeah, regions of the cells here will have a very distinctive uh, regions in individuals. Like, for example, the muscles in the reddish part and the endoderms, this in, in located in the frontal part and the notochord, the green part located here and then epidermis and outside and the massive kims here there is a massive kim cell. So every single type of the cells has a detrimental factors located inside the cells itself in the cytoplasmic. It is also explained about a specific a specificity, autonomous specificity of such a zygotic cells. There is called a matrix gene. We call it matrix. So matrix gene, gene regulates muscle development in tunicates. And this matrix genes only forms in uh, animal poles. And when the cells divide, the cells from the single cells to be the eight cells of embryo, only single cells of this embryos will contain, will have this uh, macho genes or macho or mRNA. And as you know that when the macho mRNA trans, uh, transcribes and I mean translated to be proteins, it will be the muscles, pro muscles proteins, I mean the proteins that will uh, form the, the actins. And when this is experiments, when it is in the controls, so in, in, in controls, zygotes, there is no uh, kind of modifications of the macho, in the macho genes, shown here that, that, that the distributions of this um, macho or factors for muscle actins will distribute only in the vegetal fold, in animal folds. While uh, when there is a, uh, a certain kind of modification, for example, like a genetic or interference, then the macho expressions will be depleted by kind of the treatment, for example. And also the macho could be added to other blastomers like here, for example, when we 
put when we insert the module mRNA inside uh, such these blastomeres, and then it will also trigger the formations of the muscles in such regions. So there is a time specifications, like a muscle mRNA itself. This is determined, cytoplasmic determinal factors located in the cytoplasms of each single cell. And the, two and the second type is conditional specifications. So previously we talked about the autonom auto autonomous specification when there is the determinal factors located inside the cytoplasm of the uh, single cells. But for the conditional specifications, this depends on their interactions. So the fate of such cells will be depend on interactions between such cells with the surroundings. Here, the experiments, the normal black cells located in the, the, on the animal poles and vegetal poles. And then when this normal cells, normal back cells transplant, transplanted into the belly regions, and then it will form. So uh, that these individuals will have, will have, uh, I mean, will have this, this uh, type of, of back cells located in the belly. So this is in the normal situations that the belly, uh, normal back cells will uh, located in the, in, in the back tissue of such individuals without the transplantation. But when we transplant it into, we move it into the belly regions and then it will form also to be the belly part. Then when we remove such a belly, uh, such a back cells, for example, we're using the, the, the uh, glass needle, then when it, it is removed like this, there is no problem because there will be other cells that will undergo such a specification to be the belly, uh, the, the back cells. It is mean that and in the conditional specification that specific uh, locations, I mean specific fate of such cells will be determined based on its locations and its interactions with other cells. This is also experiments showing that uh, the situations like under pressure during the cliffage will also determine the formations of uh, the cell, the arrangements of the cells and thereby the formations of the organs of such, such as individuals. In the normal cliffage, in top view, in the side view, the, there is a, a kind of the polarizations. So, these locations will be the animal pole part, while the green one will be the vegetal fold part. And then it will be the different distinctive part of the individuals uh, when it becomes an individual's ladder. But when, for example, we apply the glass plate to be to 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 be used as a force or pressure force, then there is a pressure that will change the formations and interactions of such cells. Therefore, the formations of the cells will change also due to the change in interaction between one cell to others during this uh, early stage. And therefore, it will trigger in the second cell stage, for example, the formations of the cells itself will very, very uh, highly different with this one, while there is a mix between the animal and vegetal cells. And the third type is, is of specification is sensitive cell specification. In, in, in insects, as you see here, that oh, when the eight is fertilized by the sperm, then it will undergo will form the syncytium. It is meant that single age with uh, the multiply nuclei because it nuclei, it nucleus, I mean, undergo the mitosis, but without the formations of cytoplasm and therefore it's still the only single cell like this, but the nuclei is multiple. 
many, many nuclei inside the, the single cells of this one. So what is sensual, sensual specifications? That is, is a combination between the autonomous specifications and also well, the conditional specifications also happen here. Which, which one is the autonomous specification? Because uh, the determination factors, so there is a determination factors actually in the cytoplasms, in entire cytoplasms. So every single determination factors inside the cytoplasm will be segregated to discrete locations. So the, the, the determination factors that will trigger the formations of the head, for example, or thorax, for example, will move into the frontal part while the uh, it, of the cytoplasm itself and the detrimental factors for uh, determination factor for for example the appendage or for the tails or for that uh, uh, abdominal part will uh, be in the middle or in the caudal part of cytoplasm uh, of the zygote so these autonomous specifications of course because the determination factors occurs inside the cytoplasm and it will uh, segregate it into distinctive part of such a zygote. And then, of course, actually, between, beside this determination factors, there is also uh, the interaction between nuclei. So among the nuclei will interact with others. It will also determine their future fate. So there are two factors here actually the the cytoplasmic factors that will determine of uh, the fate of such a regions of that embryo and also the interaction between nuclei also will forms will will triggers uh, the, the 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 specific fate the specific uh, differentiations of such regions. It is the uh, global web of nuclear division during the cycles of. Uh, 13 of the embryo shown here that this is a prone clay from pre mitotate there is no uh, deficiency of uh, nuclei but then shown here the purple one so the actively dividing nuclei in mitosis occurs firstly in the frontal part like this and this this wave will uh, move into the caudal part like this and it's uh, kind of that uh, the specific oh, formations of the layers like this cellularizations and then it will form the layers of the embryonic and then it will undergo the organic genesis based on the, the layers of such a embryonic the uh, i mean stage so this is the 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 results and the brief explanations of modes of cell type specification so for the autonomous specifications, uh, we can find it predominantly in, in most invertebrates. So what is this uh, specification, autonomous specification? It is a specification by differential acquisitions of certain cytoplasmic molecules present in the eggs. Invariant cleavage produce the same lineage in each embryo of the species. And for the conditional specifications, it is predominantly found in vertebrates and only few in invertebrates. And it is specification by interactions among cells. So for the autonomous, it's specification by differential differential factors or certain plasmic molecules present in the eggs. But for the uh, uh, conditional, it is conditioned by the interactions. It depends on the interactions among the cells or among the nucleates. And for the sensitive specifications uh, that predominantly found in, in insect classes, and the specification is determined by uh, by interaction between cytoplasmic regions prior to cellularization of blastoderm, and also triggered by the interactions of the nuclei itself as the conditional specifications. Then we will move to the uh, morphogenesis. So the next step is uh, after the differentiation that should be the morphogenesis, the formations of such organs. In the morphogenesis, morphogenesis there are the various critical processes. The first is uh, the directions of the cell divisions and the numbers of 
the, the deficit itself. The number of the cell deficient will determine the mass, how much, how many the cells will be formed. Here, here in these illustrations, uh, the, this person as a focomelia, he has a very small uh, appendage, small hand, because the deficient, the, the deficiency of the cells during the formations of its limbs is limited. So inadequate, the, cell, the number of cell deficiencies will also oh, have a consequence in the, uh, the formations of the organs. It will be a kind of the smaller organ, for example, incomplete organs. And the direction itself also will determine whether this, this organ will, will like this. For example, the directions of the division will be protruding into upward or it will be uh, just only the, the in super in, in surface of such an embryo. And then also, uh, be, uh, I mean, beside the deficiencies and the directions of the cells, the cells also will change the shapes in order to trigger the formations. For example, from the, the from the epithelial you know, from the uh, epithelial cells will be formed the cylindricals or from uh, cylindrical to be cuboid or tubular or other kinds of the cell steps. And also there is a cell migration process, of course, in order to trigger the formations of the organs and the growth of the cells uh, also follow with the division of the cells. And also the most important process is the cell death programs, call it apoptosis, of course. It is the, the formations of the, the uh, frontal limbs, I mean the uh, four limbs of that, that this uh, uh, compared with the mouse. So in the, in the initial, in, in initial stage, as you shown here, that those, the formations of the butt, it's called it the limb butt, it's quite the same, similar, but then there is a cellular date happen in uh, mouse or other mammals like in humans also. There is a cellular date, call it apoptosis, programmed cell deaths that will uh, happen, will occur uh, in, in uh, interdigitals and there are four we will have a distinctive uh, formations of the fingers. But for the bat, there is no cellular death process, and therefore the web will be persistently occurs in a uh, later stage and even in, in, in adults. So the cell death is also important for the formations of the such organs. Whether it will be a kind of the wing, for example, will be kind of a hands uh, or web like a, a fed in, in many kind of the bird it determined by the cell death process, call it apoptosis. And the, the lattice is about the change in the composition of the cell membranes or secreted products. So the cell membranes will, for example, will be uh, whether it will be uh, a kind of the permeables or impermeables depend on such a situations and whether it will secrete the particular components, call it extracellular matrix and uh, containing proteins and other substance that will also induce and the communications and also the formations and interaction between the cells. That is the very critical uh, part of the morphogenesis. At the end of the, my lectures, I recommend you to read the, the Topological Biology Elephants Editions by Scott and Gilbert, uh, I mean Gilbert and Barashi, and you can learn about the particular explanations from me and uh, try to understand of uh, the some basic principles in uh, developmental biology. Thank you.